sisters, and happy Father's Day. You have to pardon me, I'm a little teary every time I hear that, that song. Um, it just touches me uh, straight to the core. I should give you a little bit of an explanation as to um, this song. Um, um, you, in a few minutes, are about to see a video about uh, the painting, the exhibition, the exhibition that is in the upper room. And um, I'm really grateful for um, Jess Siswick, who couldn't be here tonight, who, uh, who put the film together for me. And it, it took months of footage uh, to put this, uh, this video together. And I had asked Thomas Fairholm to uh, compose the music for this video to accompany the images. Now I have to let you know that Thomas is 16 years old. And um, he composed this piece. Um, I, I told him that I would love to have a vocal piece to, to capture the pureness and the innocence of, of Jesus Christ as a child. And he has done so, so beautifully. And um, he had uh, brought this choir together. Um, I, I talked it over with him. I said, Thomas, um, how about doing an acapella number? And we talked about the voices to bring in. And he said, well, I feel really comfortable with this, this jazz choir at Stonebridge High School. And so I'm so grateful to them for sacrificing their time to learn this piece. They even um, practiced it during class time. I was grateful to his teacher, Mrs. Settle, who gave them class time to, to um, come up with this number, to practice it. And um, I just have to commend them. They're fine, fine young people. And I thought it was so apropos to have Thomas, who is so young, and um, to, to compose this piece, um, it captured sort of the spirit of this exhibition, which is about uh, not only the Savior, but it's about the Savior in the context. We, knew, we know what his mission was, um, and he went on to do great things, and, um, and Thomas is a young person who I know will go on to do great things. And so, um, uh, many of you have come here to, sort, to hear, um, I suppose, a testimony. I, too, am a convert. Um, of this church. I joined at the age of 19, and that was back in 1987 when I was going to college. And um, I went to art school uh, at Virginia Commonwealth University down in Richmond. And after a year of college, that is when I joined the church. And uh, sort of the ideas for um, the imagery in, in this exhibition started back then because I, I had done a study abroad in Italy and seen many, many images of the Savior and uh, Mary and iconic throughout history. And my background is in art history and fine art studio. So I am going to go ahead and let you see uh, this video. It tells a bit about um, the history of 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 the images and how they came about and why I why I'm still painting um, images of of the Savior uh, through a mother's eyes. I'm, I'm a mother of four wonderful children and I, and so I paint through that filter as a mother. And so why don't we go ahead and, and roll the video? And, um, and then I will give some remarks afterwards.
What you're looking at when you look at this exhibition is a 10-year journey. Kind of autobiographical in a way because it's like a journal of my response to the scriptures and what I'm studying and what I'm learning and what I'm learning about being a mom. They're all <laughs> uh, commentary on that in my paintings. You know, the inspiration for a lot of these images really came from my boys. I have two boys, one of which is almost 17 and the other one is 12. So I have depicted the Savior at these ages because those scenes are really relevant to me right now and my experience with them. And I, when I look at my boys, I just marvel. But there's just something about watching my boys grow into manhood to imagine where they're gonna go. So these paintings are full of anticipation. We know what the Savior's mission was so every image that you see has some element of foreshadowing of his future mission. Olive tree was such a great opportunity uh, for me as a painter to use as a symbol too. That along with so many other things. There are also scriptures which um, uses the olive tree as a symbol. The symbol it's the symbol of Israel. And Jesus Christ is the root and the offspring of David, and he is the master of the harvest. It was such a great symbol for me to paint, I just I couldn't resist. People realize what goes into painting a painting. I will do tons and tons and tons of research um, and it may take me a while to actually get to canvas. I'll do studies and variations of studies until I feel that I've got it right. So I did this little doodle in church. <laughs> Not that I doodle much in church, but sometimes when the idea hits you, you just kind of go for it. I'll also do studies in color in oil. Sometimes when it comes to props and sets, I'll need to build something like a stone wall in a carpentry shop. And of course I have to bring in models and photograph them and I'll need to costume them. And sometimes when my models move away, I'll make clay and foam model maquettes that are about 50% human scale.
prayer definitely is a part of the whole creative process. The subject matter is a sacred subject matter. Uh, I don't know how you can paint the Savior and not include prayer. When I enter the studio, um, I have to say a prayer before I begin any session. Um, and, and I notice the, the difference if I don't. I notice that um, things might not be coming together. I might be a little bit more frustrated at the canvas. And then I'll remember, oh, well, that's because I didn't pray to have the proper inspiration. The name of this song that the children in the church learn, in the, it's in the children's songbook, is called Jesus Once Was a Little Child. And I thought that was like perfect. Jesus was a real person and that even though he was the savior, he went through mortality just like us. And to me, this made the savior so very real. As I started painting this series, the boy savior also became a metaphor for children in general, that the savior had a divine mission, but every child on this earth has a divine mission. And every child and every person, every soul is precious. I, I wanted to somehow project that into my imagery that every child is precious, that every soul is precious. That is the idea that I'm um, hopefully getting across. Well, uh, Rose Dahl had me um, kind of compose some music to go along with these series of paintings she's doing. So we wanted to kind of capture the motherly feeling um, the feeling of love. When I approached the piece, I tried to, to harness kind of the wonder of that whole kind of scenario, but also capture the love that the mother would have for her child. If you asked me 10 years ago, if I knew that, that I was doing the series and it, that it would turn into what it is now, I. I didn't know. I didn't know that I would keep painting it. I did not know that it would it would still be relevant to me after this amount of time. It's never gotten old, but it has sort of become a documentary of of my life. It's kind of blows my mind because it started with one painting and then it became another painting and then all of a sudden before you know it it's over 20 paintings. What you're looking at is a culmination of 10 years of being a mom, being a painter, my struggles, my quiet moments of aha. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep painting and We'll just see where this journey takes me. I know I guess I should probably let you know as I started to indicate earlier that I, I joined the church when I was 19 and when I was in art school and uh, I joined the church, although I was 19, I had known about the church ever since I was five years old. And so it took me 14 years uh, to finally join the church. And um, I was introduced to the church uh, through my best friend, who was my neighbor, and she would take me to church activities. And I just always knew that there was something, um, there was something that her family had that I wanted. There was, um, there was something that was kind of intangible, but it was, uh, they were always so happy. And um, they had a 
loving family, and I truly felt that. I felt the power of that. And um, but it wasn't until I was um, at the time I was investigating. I was 18 years old, and I that was when it it truly meant something to me. I was on the verge of adulthood, and I wanted to know what the true church was. And so my, my good friend, she sent the missionaries to my house, and then she hightailed it to Utah. <laughs> and then I, um, I took the discussions, and I, I knew. I knew that it was, it was right. Um, everything that I had learned from the missionaries made perfect sense, that uh, there was a restoration of, of the fullness of the gospel on this earth. Uh, that made perfect sense to me uh, that there was a plan of happiness and and so I joined the church and I want to put into context for you that um, as an art student and uh, at, at Virginia Commonwealth University anybody here familiar with that school um, I'm not sure if, uh, many of you are aware uh, it's in the city of Richmond it's in the very, very heart of Richmond, in a, a kind of a rough part of town. And uh, there are lots of ideas going on there in the art school. It's quite liberal. And so I kind of, um, I was probably one of only about five Mormons in the whole undergraduate school, uh, all, all undergraduate program, at least that I knew of, um, and at least those that would kind of get together. And um, we kind of clung together, and um, and in art school they teach you one thing, and it's kind of not exactly what the gospel teaches you. <laughs> and so um, by the time I graduated, I um, here I had gotten my degree in art history and fine art studio, and I had to make some decisions about what I was going to do. I knew I was going to, I wanted to, to a family, and um, my junior year of college, I met my husband to be. And uh, in the middle of our senior year of college, we, we got married, and we actually started having children soon. Much to the chagrin of some of my, um, my one of my college prof professors nearly jumped on my throat. He thought I was throwing away my career. He thought I was nuts. <laughs> and um, but I knew it was what I needed to do. That was um, it was the right path for me to get married in the temple and to start our young family. For health reasons, we also decided to start early having children. Um, we thought that was uh, uh, the best course. So um, and here I was, a mom and. I have this degree, what am I going to do with it? Oh, maybe I'll have to just put it on the shelf. Well, for a while there, I didn't know, uh, there are a lot of young moms who ask me, now, how do you do it? Some mom artists who are out there, I don't know how you do it. How do you find time to paint? What do you do? What do you do with your day? And um, I think that uh, the uh, misconception here is that they think that I have all of a sudden pumped these paintings out. And that <laughs> there were 21 paintings in that room upstairs, but they didn't all happen at once. They all it happened over a long period of time. Um, and when I could get to them um, here and there, and I was I was a mom. I, I was um, being a mom full time. And um, and it came to a sort of a point where I was a little discouraged because. Um, Moms with young children, you know what I'm talking about. They take up not only all your time, they take up your energy. And it's a good thing. They're, it's wonderful, it's, it's difficult, it's wonderful, it's full of joy, it's full of tears and kissing boo-boos and, and all of that. And then you're kind of exhausted. And I thought, I, maybe, I just, maybe I just have to put away the paints. And I remember saying a prayer to Heavenly Father. I said, Heavenly Father, um, I, I kind of have this talent here that I don't know what to do with. Um, I, but if you want me to, I will give up. I will give up art if that's what you want me to do. And just focus 
on, on raising these kids. And the answer that I got back was just a sweet impression that no, I didn't need to put them away, but there's a time and a season for everything. And that, um, not to compare myself to all of my artist friends and their careers, that, um, that their careers were passing me by. I kind of felt like the world was passing me by. And um, that was okay. I had these great kids and a great husband and fulfilling church callings. And that was, that's wonderful. And, um, and that for a time, that is what took up my time. And I, but I just always remembered that, um, that impression that I didn't need to worry about, didn't need to hurry. The Lord had his timing. And that, um, so stolen moments here and there, here a painting, um, there a painting, or more like, here a painting, put it away for two years, come back to it in two years, and then, um, <laughs> and then maybe finish it. That's kind of how it was for a while. And like I said in the, in the video, I really didn't know that this series would turn into what it is, um, and before I knew it, it just um, it kind of snowballed and took it on a life of its own, and it became such a great opportunity for me. I I do do a lot of research and I do a lot of studying, and and sort of what comes out of me, um, the paintings that come out invariably are are going to have some spiritual content because the things that I'm studying, we're, we're told we need to study our scriptures every day. And um, we need to pray every day. And so that just came, became part of the process. It became, and the images sort of became what they are. And, um, and so um, what you're seeing there, like, like I said in the video, is sort of just the result of just here and there, small drops in the bucket. Um, and essentially they're my testimony. And my testimony throughout this whole thing is um, that I, I have learned a, a more of a closeness to the scriptures as I try to, to imagine you know, who these people are in the scriptures and, and then to try and bring them to life and to do the digging that I needed to do to find out who they are and you know, what was life like in Nazareth? And so that would lead to, okay, what did Nazareth look like? What was, what, what did the town, what, what was their lifestyle like? You know, I found out it was a communal farm type of environment. And, and what were the things that uh, the Savior, what type of lifestyle was he used to? And so it was a great opportunity for me to, to really, to get to know the Savior, but through a mother's eyes. I, I'm a mom, and I, I connected um, with Mary, and I always wondered what it was like to, to raise the Savior. And, and then it became such a, you know, it, it, it helped me to see my own children in that kind of light that each and every child has an amazing purpose on this earth. We're not just here to go to work or go to school, um, wake up and um, get try and get through the day, go to sleep and start it all over again. There's so much more to life than that. There's so much more joy and sweetness that Heavenly Father wants to bless us with. He wants us to have the blessings and the sweetness of relationships. He wants us to have a relationship with Him. He wants us to know that we can call upon Him. And the fact that, um, to me, that this exhibition happened is kind of a miracle in that I know that the Lord was mindful of even me and my trials, and I could take any, any, any technical problem to him. There would be times on this project where I'd be like, something's not working. Something is not working. I, I don't know what it is. And um, Heavenly Father, help me to find that solution. And invariably I would. Sometimes, sometimes I'd get a, 
inspiration to, well, man, maybe you should try this, or something that's completely out of the blue, that I know it wasn't me. And so, um, and that can apply to anything. It's not just in, um, in painting. This is in parenting, um, um, and in my church calling. Um, you kids, um, I know you can, if you're having trouble on a test, you can ask for Heavenly Father, ask Heavenly Father for help on a test or on a project at work, um, in whatever you're doing. Uh, Heavenly Father wants you to involve Him. He wants you to engage Him in prayer. He's real. And I know, too, Thomas was very, very prayerful. He's totally the example of, um, he, this was kind of the microcosm of, uh, in so many ways of, of um, that whole process. Uh, I know he was extremely prayerful, and I know that I have felt the, the, the spirit in the music of, 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 that he has composed. And I, I can only hope and pray that that is, um, that the spirit is in the paintings. It, it's my testimony. I don't require it to touch everybody. But, um, and, and I'm only grateful when it does actually resonate with, with those who come to see. And I'm going to end with sharing you a story. Um, you probably, if you remember in the video, there, um, I had my model, Raquel Machado Ward, who started modeling for me about 10 years ago, and she lived in the Ashburn Ward, and that's where, uh, in the Ashburn area at the time, we were in the Ashburn Ward, we split several times um, since then, but um, it was almost um, a, uh, it was almost like, a, I don't know, it, it was almost a physical, spiritual thing to, to find it, to meet her, and then I just felt really strongly, this is your model for Mary. It was so out of the blue, and I asked her to model for me, and um, she uh, agreed to, to do this for me, and neither of us knew, you know, that I would just keep painting this series over and over again. And uh, her, mo her mother told me later that, she said, thank you for asking Raquel to model for you. Um, she had, is such a beautiful girl that um, she had to turn, she turned down a modeling job because our family just didn't feel that it was right. We thought that maybe she would have to compromise some things. Her standards to be in the modeling industry. And so, you're just grateful that you asked her, and this was 10 years ago, and, and, and so I, I kind of kept painting the series, and, um, and then, lo and behold, the Church History Museum buys the painting that she's in, and so I hope that in some ways she feels a little bit compensated um, for having made that sacrifice. Um, and the other story that I wanted to leave you with is that when I was in Deseret Book um, in, in Utah and I was painting Mary from life, I was painting, um, you'll see in the exhibition, if you haven't gone up there, it's called Mary and Child, and she, where she's holding this infant. And uh, um, I was just going to paint Mary that day, and, and uh, um, my daughter, uh, who lives in Provo, we were driving up to Deseret Book, and I said, Jesse, we have to go to Walmart and buy a baby doll. <laughs> she said, what, Mom? Come on, we just have to go and get, let's go, get to Deseret Book so you can do this thing where I'm scheduled to do a Lunch and Learn uh, painting demo, and we bought this baby doll, and it was not very, not very nice. It was this plastic baby doll. And so I gave it to my model to hold, and um, I started painting Mary. And, and then this couple kind of, they walk in, and they have this baby with them. And they said, would you like to use our baby to model? I'm like, Yes, sure. I mean, it was kind of random. I said, "Don't you like need to be somewhere?" And they're like, "Oh, we were kind of we we're here. We we're at a wedding, and then we have to wait around." And um, and so I'm like, "Okay, let's paint this baby." So she she held this baby, and she was she started snuggling in it, and it and the painting started to happen. It was felt more natural, and I and there was this one woman who was behind me, and she parked her chair behind me. 
she started watching me paint. And she was there the whole time. I was there for like four hours. And, um, she, and I was maybe only like partway through. And she said, are you selling this painting? And I said, oh, well, I don't know. I guess sure. And she said, can I buy it? I'm like, I've only made a few strokes. You sure you want to buy it? You don't even know what it's going to look like. And um, she said, uh, yeah, I would really like to buy it. So I get uh, most of the way through this painting by the end of that session. And she and my daughter says, Mom, that lady's crying. And I, uh, and I, um, I turned around and I, I, I took her side after a little bit. And we had started to pack up. And I said, are you OK? And she said, well, I have to tell you the story that um, I miscarried. Um, a few uh, a few months ago, and it's been really hard on me. And this baby, uh, we were going to name this baby Harrison. And the couple that came in and lent their baby to me to use and as boy savior, his name is Harrison. And um, I was really floored. And she related this to me, and we both cried, and we were hugging, and and it was just moments like that where you, when I just totally realized that it's so much. There's, it's it's really not about me. It's not about the painting. It's about people, and and how mindful. I know Heavenly Father was mindful of Barbie. That was the name of this woman. He was mindful of her. He knew that he needed to help her heal her heart. And somehow, through his good grace, he managed to orchestrate this little scenario. And I was only just a small part of it. And in its moments like these where it's, it's not about, like I said, it's not about me and it's not about the painting, but it's about touching people and I was just so grateful and we were all grateful and now and we're still friends Barbie and I are still friends and she was so good to to mail her painting back to me to for this exhibition brothers and sisters I just want to let you know that I have a testimony I have a testimony without a shadow of a doubt that Heavenly Father is real and I know that he's mindful of each and every one of us he's mindful of you he knows your struggles. He knows your trials, your pains, your joys. He knows the deep desires of your heart. And if we would only turn to him, if, if we have any questions, we are invited to ask. We are invited to ask. And prayer is a real and true and powerful thing. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.